As research continues to show global temperatures rising, scientists are looking for ways to maintain future crops. A study at the Salk Institute shows that the interaction with two key nutrients is essential. Our chief meteorologist Carlene Chavis sees what's growing in the plant lab in this Earth 8 report. Plants, well, they provide food and fiber, and they're essential, especially when it comes to a healthy diet. And, well, this one's not ready to consume yet, but it is being used in research. When you have global warming and temperatures that are rising, you want to make sure that they maintain their nutritious value, and also there's ways that they can combat climate change. If the global temperatures rise and we continue to produce food for, for us that should be nutritious, why should we accept that um, there's actually less nutrients in plants then? Well, that's something to think about. And here's more food for thought. Scientists believe global temperatures will rise by close to three degrees Fahrenheit by 2050. When it comes to plants, they are sensitive to temperature changes. Despite these differences, the processes that we have found in terms of temperature um, a temperature-based growth regulation are the same. Heat response and plant growth has been mainly observed in a plant's shoot. The parts you see above ground, the stem, the leaves, buds, and flowers. Through a process called thermomorphogenesis, researchers studied a plant's growth response to elevated temperatures, initially in their shoots. Growing on that knowledge, they also looked at root response and its interaction with the shoot. There's actually a gene, the gene is called HI5, um, that, uh, that basically that travels from the shoot to the root and also gets made in the root that basically tells cells to grow faster and to expand more in response to high temperature. Two key nutrients need to be present in the soil, nitrogen and phosphorus. While the recent study at the Salk Institute found that plant root growth significantly increases when exposed to higher temperatures, there's a catch. If you don't have enough nitrogen or phosphate, you're not going as a plant. You're not going to grow as fast when the temperatures rise. This makes them less nutritious for us and animals to feed off. Nitrogen is good for a high protein diet. Phosphorus is needed for plant growth. Already present in most soils, this research shines a light on their importance in future crops. Shoots and roots will grow with warming temperatures, but nitrogen and phosphorus rich soil is needed. Plants deposit less uh, nutrients like nitrogen or phosphate in their leaves, for instance. And so they grow more, but they don't um, you know, accumulate as many uh, nutrients in their above ground parts. Initially studied in lab plants, salt researchers are growing their knowledge on whether crop plants like soybeans, in addition to rice plants, which are in the grass family and found in most cereals, will respond the same way to warming temperatures. Soybean and rice plants have similar proteins, including high five, that share a common genealogy to lab plants. And we know that in both of these species, these responses are conserved, so they occur. So we believe for almost any crop plant that we want to work with, and that is important for feeding the world, this response will be present. This research expands on the process of naturally engineering plants and propagating that has been practiced for the last 10,000 years for higher yielding and nutritious crops. Through studies like this one, information and a course of action comes at a faster rate with the goal of nourishing ourselves while making plants more resilient to greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide that are causing global warming. Because not only do we want to sequester carbon, we also want to make sure that plants continue to be nutritious or become even more nutritious. For CBS 8, I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis.